The conversation on homework continues on tea or coffee this morning. We're discussing the relevance of homework. And we're asking if homework is an, a necessary thing for students, in, uh, for young children in schools. Is it an important thing? Is it effective for learning? How can homework be made effective for learning? Now we're going to be looking at some homework myths. And these are some, you know, some things about homework that are not particularly correct or not particularly factual, you know. All right, so whether there's too much or none at all, school homework or assignments is known to produce big emotions. From the teachers assigning it to the children, bringing it home, and the parents puzzling over the new algebraic equation, every stakeholder in the homework system likely has a passionate opinion. Teachers give homework because they feel they need, to, they need to in order for their students to truly succeed. The children at the table before dinner would much rather be doing anything else. And parents are either tired of battling with their kids or just plain resentful about the amount of work sent home. So we're going to be looking at some of these myths, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, before we get into this, I found out that research has actually shown that there is no strong link between academic success and homework. Very okay. interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> um, now, they said that, you know, but, you know, that was one research out of many, by the way. So, you know, some, some researchers have, you know, taken I different... Say I don't quite yeah, agree. Yeah, taking different okay. methodologies or methods of research into practice, they yeah. come up with different um, results. So, this particular research I was reading, it said there's no particular linking between academic success and homework. But they noticed that what's that the, the, the children who grow up with homework learn life skills more than they learn um, academic um, skills per se. So they are learning more life skills about responsibility, about um, task um, deadlines, about completing tasks, you know, about, um, you know, um, doing further research and coming back into class, you know. So they are learning more of those professional and life skills than they are doing, than they are um, academically than, than its relevance to academic success. But, it's it's a bit tricky. Yeah, doesn't that work uh, hand in hand? Yeah, I, you know, I um, I mean, I'm quite indifferent about the research. I, I, it may not necessarily doesn't necessarily have to work hand sure. in hand actually, mm -hmm. because a child that is academically is not succeeding academically, but is doing his homeworks and stuff like this, but it's probably not just getting it right, would still learn those skills even after they've learned after that child has left the school. So, you know. All right, so we're going to get into the myths. And the first one that we have <laughs> says, if I help my child with homework, he will never learn to be independent. Now, this is a homework myth. Now, this is one of the myths parents come up with, thereby sometimes leaving their children to do their homework themselves. It is important for parents to know that they play a major role in, in role modeling. Parents are the most powerful role models for learning, along with the teacher in the classroom. When you work with your child on homework, your example of how you think, um, your example of how you think through a problem on how you would solve the assignments can be vital for your child. As you work with a child on homework, you may do homework alongside him. This is called parallel work. For instance, if your child was given long division as homework and he's having a little bit of difficulty, you can talk about the problem, go through the steps, and then as you start an example, both of you can work on the same problem and then you can compare answers. This is totally different from just telling him if he's right or wrong. Because when you compare answers and his answer is not correct, you can go back to find what step he had, he had trouble with and see where he or she had the difficulty. Absolutely. I, I like this one. Now, yeah. two things I'm able to pick from this particular one, parallel learning and role modeling um, from parents. Now, yes. I like how role modeling was actually described in this particular myth because parent, um, children learn um, faster from, you know, doing. They learn, they learn faster from doing. They learn faster, um, um, they learn faster from modeling rather than from sitting down and just taking things in. What mm -hmm. do I mean by modeling? They learn faster when they are watching you. So with a child, I realize that you can tell the child, don't sit on this chair. And the child will sit on the chair. <laughs> because you're sitting on the yeah. chair. But Simple. if you, for instance, tell the child, don't sit on the chair, 
But more so, if you don't sit on the child more, more than you tell the child to don't sit on the chair, the child will not sit on the chair. So children, they, <laughs> they learn and they adapt their behavior a lot more to what they see. They are very visual. You know, when they are when they are that small, when they are growing up, they are visual learners. They have, you know, they learn a lot, and that's why you know all these games. They use a lot of colors, music, you know, um, teddy bears, all these kind of things that a child can relate to because they understand the psychology of the child. Yeah. And you know, especially when it comes to learning. Yeah. So when you know this thing about role modeling for this thing about parallel learning, I really do agree with it because you are not just helping a child to solve. You are not even really helping a child to solve the equation. But what you are doing is that you are showing the child how you work. You are showing the child, okay, we can do it this way. And you're doing it alongside the child. So the child is watching you. And what we just what we you know we just we just said now is that children are visual learners when they're that age. They're learning a lot from modeling, they're yes. learning a lot from what they can see. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing it alongside with them, they are watching you and they're using you know, they're learning from your module and using your module as theirs. And then they're using your, your problem-solving um, um, tactics and strategies, adapting it to their work, and then they're, you know, essentially modeling how you solve problems. So that's always a good way. You know, yeah. as, a, as an adult, you, by the time you associate with somebody for a very long time, you pick up their behavior. Yeah, you're saying this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, pick up, um, you pick up behavior, you pick up mannerisms. Yeah. If you're not very careful, you pick up how to speak, how to behave, how to react. You know, you pick up behaviors generally. And it's even more interesting as a kid right. because you are the only one that they know. And as they are growing up, they are trying to shape themselves yeah. into something. Yeah. And because you are their parents, you're the first example that they're looking at. So if you test something, you pick up your phone or you pick up your book and you're reading it. And then you say... Oh, Ade, go and pick your book and read. Your child would do that faster yeah. than if you're watching TV and you ask Ade to go yeah, pick up book. TV. <laughs> I want to watch TV too. Yeah. But if the child always sees you read, mm. every minute reading, they have no excuse yeah. than to read. Yeah. If your actually, child always actually. sees that, oh, okay, you are doing what you're asking them to do, they would, in fact, they'll be free to come ask yeah. you more questions. Yeah. I don't know, how are you going doing that? Mm. Okay, so I'd like to know. I mean, you see, baby, um, baby videos online where the child is saying what the daddy is saying or the yeah. child is doing what the daddy or the mommy is doing yeah. and then you'll be wondering where did they get that from? Yeah, exactly. They were watching you. Modeling. <laughs> were, but so majorly parallel learning and role modeling is so important. So yeah. It isn't true if you say that if you help your child with their homework that they will probably not learn to be independent and all of that. No. Yeah. What is not um, right is when you are actually bombarding them with the information or you are doing the assignments for them. Yeah. That's a different thing but if you're there um, step by step along the way teaching them how to go about it i don't think that's a problem yeah actually. let's move to the next myth so this one says the study area must be quiet no tv no radio no cds no tapes in truth there are some people who can who who when they study cannot concentrate when it is quiet in fact studying in the library where it is really quiet will be the most difficult place for them to concentrate Recent studies have shown that in many cases, the best sound background is classical music. Hmm. This seems to stimulate the brain so that the students can concentrate without being distracted. In some situations where classical music doesn't seem to work, find something that would be white noise to your child. You might be jarred by it, but they won't because children are used to their type of music. There is one caution though, use orchestral music without words when they're doing reading because the lyrics could be distracting. During math, the lyrics may not be distracting. Interesting. Mm, yeah, yeah. I know a, a lot of people that love to read when there's music. Mm. Any sort of music. I had a friend, if she's not playing rap music, she's not reading. Mm. A headphones. Rap music, she's reading and she did excellently well. Yeah. And you know, you'd realize that there is no straight road to how you should learn or how actually. you should read and all of that. But well, there's a great advice on actually trying classical music. Yeah. Or using music. I've used classical another. music before. And did it, it work? works. It works, actually. Because it just makes you concentrate. It has interesting. You know what the right subset is not, it's, it's very it's actually very correct. Um it's I don't know, it just makes you concentrate. Calm, relax. Yeah. Yeah, you make, you 
Yeah, you know, and because especially when you're not really used to classical music, so it becomes like a white noise in your background as a right of said. It becomes mm -hmm. your white noise, you know. Another thing I do apart from classical music is just instrumentals. Yeah, that's what that's what the writer said. The writer was talking about orchestra music yeah, and all of that. As yeah. long as there are no words, yes. but then when you're trying to solve mathematics, we, you can okay put use, yeah, you can yeah, use lyrics, lyrics and there won't yeah. be a problem. This actually works. I I really didn't know about classical music. Yeah. That's interesting. Try it. Try okay. it when you're reading something. I really, so you know, but, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I I know about relaxation sounds. Yeah. But then this is the problem with you relaxation sleep. sounds. <laughs> you get too you comfortable. You fall asleep. You get too comfortable yeah, yeah. and then you sleep off. But then I mean, it keeps you relaxed yeah. and very calm. Yeah. So and then you just understand what it is that you're taking in. Yeah. You're so relaxed. And you yeah. Do so that's exactly that's the difference with classical music because there are spikes in the tones. You know, like so. Those, ah. oh, those, oh, those spikes have a way it you alive. Yeah, to just like keep you up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will definitely try. try it out. <laughs> All right, so the next myth we have for you this morning is homeworks, homework must be done in the child's room. What? <laughs> the next myth that abounds is that every student should do their homework in their room at a desk with a lamp, sharpened pencil or a pen, and a dictionary at their side. When in fact, for many students, the best place the best place to do homework is in the hub of the family home, that is at the kitchen table or dining area or living room. Isn't this dis distracting? You might think. Consider this: when a student is sitting in his room with the door closed, quiet, doing his homework, he begins to think that he is the only person in the whole wide world doing homework at that moment. All his friends must be having fun. He thinks they're doing something other than homework. This makes them feel burdened. What works in the kitchen? number one is that they can't get off the task because you're there to bring them back to what they're supposed to be doing they could sit up in their room no tv or stereo on quietly sitting and twiddling their, th their thumbs then you come back and they haven't gotten much further than they went th than when they started but in the kitchen you can keep an eye on them and get back get them back on task in addition you're right there when they have a question if a child has to come from his room with a question to find you in the kitchen on the way to meet you, he may be distracted by things in the house such as a pet, a sibling, sound from TV, or maybe even get a snack and now his homework time is interrupted. Because if he's in the living room or the kitchen with you, but if he's in the living room or kitchen with you, you are easily accessible to him without distractions. All right. So, okay. The myth that this, this myth that, you know, um, they have to do homework in their room at a desk with a lamp, sharp wood pencil or a pen and dictionary at the side is like a Hollywood type of, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a movie type of imagery yeah, of things. how homework is done you know the cinema has a way of painting realities yes. that are not necessarily you know um that are a bit too plain that are not that you know they, they are simplifying the human experience um experience into particular images just so that they can pass a message mm. actually but then you know the consumers of these images they take you know, it you know we learn you know we learn a lot from cinemas we yeah. pick a lot of um information from there you know um yeah. unconsciously actually but there are times whereby some people actually use movies as references to yeah. how they want to live their daily lives so i saw a joke on Twitter one time, or maybe it was on a friend's status, I'm not sure where I saw it, but then the person was saying that a typical dining table is not for eating in Nigerian home. It is majorly for assignments. Homework, yes. Homework, <laughs> like that is what your dining yeah. table is meant for. I mean, because you... Well, I can speak for myself or some homes that I've been to. They hardly eat there. They yeah. probably your parents are eating in the sitting room, On the, the trail, living room, yeah, and all of that. Room. But you are doing your assignments there, and that's where your your your, your parents teach you. So doing the assignments in the room. What I know is maybe you've done something or they don't want you to watch the TV yeah, or maybe they, you, they want to put you on some sort of punishment and then they send you to your room to yeah, do your assignments. Yeah. That's what I know, yeah. really. But that's not necessarily true yeah. because you can actually do your assignments anywhere. Anywhere, really. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really. You know. Okay. So you know, um, with the with the myth that was mentioned before, I was going to say in secondary school. Um, so I was in art class, and you know, we know. I think art class in most schools are very noisy. 
I don't know, yeah, class in my secondary school was very, very noisy. We, we were the noisiest. So, um, I, and the, and the, you know, in How junior... you shade off? <laughs> <laughs> what? In junior secondary school, my class was also noisy. So, and I didn't really like leaving the class to go and study. So, I have to stay in class to study. So, because of that, I got very, very, very used to studying in a noisy environment. Mm. As a matter of fact, I used to like it because um, um, at the time I would like to, so you, you know, when I'm, and this is just me, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, I look up, I see something funny, I laugh, and then I go back to what I'm reading. So all those little distractions, I used to use it as a form of a breaker for, you know, um, what I'm studying. Mm. Do you understand? So I, I used to enjoy reading in a noisy environment compared to a quiet environment. Now, you know, taking this one about, you know, um, the bedroom space, when you are alone in your bedroom, um, it's, it tends to be also obviously very quiet. Um, when no one's watching on you, you don't necessarily have to be distracted with a phone or a television or a video game. You can just be there dwindling you know like uh, you drawing more manners of things or you know having all manners of conversation with the, you know the child can be having all manners of conversation with him or herself because you know there's nobody there to actually you know um um you know tend to what he or she is doing mm. at the time so you know bringing the 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 uh, well in nigeria setting we always do our homework on, on the, the dining table, table. anyway yes. so that works because you know um for the sake of in my own case little distractions here and there that works as little breakers and also you are able to to actually keep an eye on the child and to make sure that he's actually doing his homework because yeah. at the end of the day you know what's, what what was the point of locking each other in his room and he has not even doing, been doing anything for the past three hours or something the child will probably just be sleeping yes and then the parent they are say okay go and read your book <laughs> okay that's it good yeah, night exactly all right anyways uh, uh, this next one says both parents are capable at handling homework hmm that might be a myth. Let's check it out. The myth that either parent is equally capable of helping with homework is unfortunately not true. One parent may not be able to work better than the other with homework in general or with a particular child and their homework. It involves tolerance, tolerance level, rapport, patience, and knowledge of the subject area that the homework assignment is covering. Most times, children know which parents ask for help with certain subjects mm. when it has to do with their homework. As a parent, don't feel embarrassed if there is something that you don't feel you don't feel as capable of helping with. You can divide up the tasks. Do the things that you feel you can do to the best with your child and let the other parents do the rest. If you're a single parent and you do not have that option, you may want to involve a, a tutor. tutor. Yes. yes. In this part of the world, in fact, it's almost like a regular thing for, for your child to have a tutor after mm. school, like after school lesson. Yeah. There's always like a thing or you know that it's his mommy that you want to meet. Mm. If it's, and it's his daddy that you want to meet for certain Lesson days. teacher. Lesson, That's yes, you have lesson called. teacher. I was trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have the school teacher yeah. and then you have the lesson teacher. Sometimes it doesn't happen every day. It may happen twice in a week or it happens during the weekend. Yeah. I mean, I cannot, I don't know which child didn't have a lesson teacher. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't want to assume. Yeah. I had one. I'm guessing you did I too. I did, lesson uh, teacher. So, yeah. And um, it was a thing. Yeah. And that's because your parents are very busy. Yeah. Sometimes they check your assignment, sometimes they don't. And then they assume that, you know, your schoolwork and everything, well, we've paid for it. Let yeah. lesson teacher <laughs> take care of this one. Yeah. And then you already know that, okay, so maybe there's no lesson teacher and everything. You should meet your dad. Mm. Okay, daddy, they, they gave us creative arts, and yeah. I want you to help me out, and all of that. Or did you do paper mache? Yes, the, the ones where you like weave with paper, isn't it? No, no, that's not paper mache. What is paper mache? Paper mache is that one where you like take newspapers and you okay, soak with them soak in starch, and then you, and then yeah, you yeah, piece yeah, it yeah, together yeah. Okay, yes, things. I did do that. Emo, did you yes. do collage? I did collage. Yeah, so you know all of the things. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my my dad helps me with it. Then okay. My mom helps me with pottery. Oh, and okay. We did mud work. Ah, what is it called? Ah, it's not pot pottery. Pottery is for pots, yes. right? Yes. Yes. 
It was mud work. Okay. So I created a lizard. Clay. Clay, yeah, clay work. Uh, yeah. And all of that. I did lizard. Lizard, and mortar okay. And pesto. Oh, wow. You know, Look all of these little, little <laughs> things, you know, it helps. Yeah. You know what parents to meet, mm. actually, for all of these um, assignments. You know who to meet for mathematics. You know who to meet for English, yeah. social studies, civic studies, you know, all of these things. Yeah. And it's exciting. So, parents, if your child doesn't come to say, Mommy, help me with maths. It's she okay. Doesn't... <laughs> she did not mean that you don't know math. She just means it just means that maybe daddy knows him more. Daddy knows him more. No, anyway, maybe. Yeah, my parents should not come to my child should not come to me from math because he, <laughs> he will fail. Uh, <laughs> all right, teachers. Uh, the next myth we have is that teachers who parents are good at homework. Parents who are pa teachers rather who are parents are good homework helpers. I so don't if believe. you are a teacher. Um, you know that the belief that teachers should automatically be good homework helpers do their own do <laughs> all right sorry i'll take that back again if you're a teacher you know that the belief that teachers should automatically be good homework helpers to their own children is a myth it's ironic that as a teacher you can help others be other people's children all day long and when you come home sometimes your patience working with your own ch ch um, children is quite strained sometimes a teacher or a parents might have difficulty different differentiating between their roles as instructor instructor and as parents in that case again a tutor may be helpful or the non teacher parents can help actually i agree with this mm. you know and you know, you know the points that really hammered this particular myth is you know um sometimes a teacher or parents might have difficulty differentiating between their roles as a structure as and as parents the way you parents you know you know as you know a, a parent who is a teacher the way you're supposed to parent a child is not necessarily a teacher but a, a parent so you know especially in this part of the world you know teachers can be quite dictating with um and quite authoritative with it with the way they teach um young children because they're very it's usually very one-sided and please correct me if i'm wrong um it's, <laughs> it's usually one-sided and whatnot um so there's no particularly communication or relationship for I, I, I between think, i didn't say all okay i, didn't say, I think yeah, it I'm actually not depends yeah. on what teacher yeah. because i don't yeah. think that's that's a, but a general I didn't say thing all. i wouldn't say some i would say most Hmm. actually yes I, I mean education in this part of the of the in nigeria is a problem and maybe maybe okay wait hold on you can say most while you were learning and while you were okay. studying okay because now a lot of things okay. have changed i mean we have a lot of um, okay. literacy okay. educators that have come on the show okay. and we've seen their patterns That's fair. and it's different so okay. we can say that while we learned yeah it was a okay. lot okay. but at this time we have I, younger people that yeah, are teaching now people a lot of training who are actually passionate about what they're doing very passionate okay, about it right. people that have traveled far and wide and are very exposed so i really cannot okay. you know okay all right yeah. but you know okay anyway we're not going to make this a conversation <laughs> but you know the point i'm trying to drive us really is that sometimes you know it can be now when you have such a teacher who is that kind of you know dictating um, um, so a parent who is that kind of dictating teacher, um, different, di differentiating between their role as instructor and parents can be quite difficult when they are in the home space. Yes. So, you know, it's, and then they are, they are, they are dealing with their child as, um, a, as a dictating teacher instead of a relationship, um, a relational parent, you know, mm -hmm. and that is what it should be really, you know, especially when, because now that child has been in a school with a dictating um, teacher for instance only to come home to a dictating parents that child will never learn anything and that's just the truth of the matter okay so. i guess i guess what you mean <laughs> honestly and uh, that can be true depending yeah. on how yes. the teacher goes about it yeah. i mean the way you teach the kids in school is definitely different from how you're going to teach your child yes, at home at because home. now you are a parent not yeah, a teacher. You cry, but you have parents. an advantage over other parents because you are a teacher, teacher. that is a parent yes so you're meant to actually you, you should, know. but somehow it doesn't work out that way. It, it, it's just like how a doctor sometimes cannot doctor himself. Ah, yes, that's true. You know? Yeah, Those yeah, that's true. I guess the other day they said doctors have a lot more high BP last that, week that yeah, yeah yeah that they should also check yeah, themselves because sometimes you, you don't pay so that's much true. attention to yourself anymore because yeah. you're caring for other people like mm. you've taken other people's burden on your own shoulder same as how some lawyers can't lawyer themselves 
Like, it's, interesting. Just, it's just interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was, oh, 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 this is a very easy one. Psychologists, therapists, they yeah. have other people that listen Gets to them. them. Yeah, they can't therapy their self. Mm, are they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next myth says, the best time to do homework is immediately a child gets home after school. That is definitely, definitely a myth. Definitely wrong. So it <laughs> says, as a parent, when you come home from work and you have extra work to do at home, Paperwork, perhaps. When you come, when you come in the door, is that the first thing you do? No, and that is not the first thing that may be appropriate for your child to do either. They need some time to get a snack, go outside, and even mindlessly watch a TV show just to unwind. Allow them some amount of time to unwind so that they can be ready for homework. Remember that they've just had a whole day of schoolwork. So eating, relaxing, and some physical exercise should take place before homework. Look at the pile of homework and see how much there is and estimate about how much time needs to be spent on each assignment. Then decide on the priorities. Make a schedule. See if you can fill See if you can still fit in one of their favorite TV programs or time for them to talk on the phone with their friends. Mm. Yes. Mm. Please. I mean, I don't know why that has become a thing where immediately you're back from school, drop your bag, change your clothes, let me see your assignment. Like, it's like. just like a routine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, eat. Sometimes they allow the kids to eat. And yeah. then, uh, let me see your assignments immediately. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, do your assignments and everything. Some parents actually believe that. Okay, so maybe when you're done with all work, and then you can go and play, yeah. and then you go and sleep. I don't know how that works, but I think it is just very healthy. Yeah. And when they're back, let them take a shower, let them change to their home clothes, let them eat, let yeah. them play, watch TV, relax, and then, all right, let's take a look at what yeah. you have. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like, like, um, it's like, for instance, if you, if you come back from work and immediately you come back from work, ah. you're heading straight to the study. That's it's just, so it's the same thing. My brain cannot just you know, the average, Yeah, the average young adult who is working like a nine to five, for instance, when they get back from work, they just want to relax first. You know, you want to sleep, you want to have a shower, really? eat, maybe watch one episode from your series. Before then, you maybe just look at some things that from work that you probably haven't finished up on. Some people don't even look at anything, bro. Like, you know, like, like once that nine to five is done, <laughs> that is it. You understand? And you know, that the average young adult or you know even the average parents would probably do that you know after work they'll relax and you know just just relax but then you're asking a child to immediately after i come back from school start assignments that doesn't how does that work out <laughs> like if you as an adult needs to needs a break you need to just relax before you do any work related thing a child needs even much more relaxation before you know they delve into yes. you know like all these assignments and what i feel you know i feel like it maybe is a perspective on children that oh we're well, going to make you the best kind of adult as possible so we'll make your childhood a bit harder than it's supposed to uh That's yeah no please don't do that children need to play and you know them playing we've established this morning that you know there's a lot of creativity that is experienced in the child in the in the, in, in the path of the child when he is um playing and learning at the same time you know when they are somehow having an education whilst whilst they're playing yeah we've we've kind of you know we've concluded this morning that um there's a lot of creativity that happens in 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 that moment and yes. creativity is essential for effective learning so john we should probably stop treating children like young adults and treat them like children you'd realize you know? that a lot of children grow up very quickly yeah because of the amount of things that it gets to do and by the time that they, you, you realize that a child is 10 now, I will not take out the fact that a lot of kids are geniuses mm. and all of that. And even if you have, see, in fact, this is for parents that have genius kids. If you have a genius as a child and that child is moving very fast at age 10, the child is already in the university wanting to do their master's. Yeah. And all that. we have kids like that. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't let them play because at the end of the day, you're going to have a genius child who is socially awkward yeah. and a misfit. And then life will not be very easy for that child because yeah. they will be bullied a lot. Yeah. They would be pushed aside. And, then, you know, the only thing that they would know is the books and then, you know, the intelligent things that they're creating and all of that. But they would not be able to... Well, you don't necessarily have to fit 
into everybody's it, yeah. perspective. But you should be able to relate. Yeah. Have relationships. Yeah. Be able to communicate. Communicate yeah. your feelings. Express yourself mm. and all of that. So let children play. Yeah. That's what we're talking about, really. Assignments are very good. You should be a part of your child's everyday life. You should also be... You should also have a way you do your things at home. So if you're not the one that's very good with assignments, yes, you can, you know, share the tasks between yeah. yourselves. And also, if you are a teacher as also a parent, please, you have an advantage. Teach your child the right way. <laughs> be nice to them. Be sweet to them. Let them play, really.